Hi, fourth graders. It's Miss Pan again. I am going to be covering topic 10.5 solve time problems today, pages 568 through 569. Now, today we're going to be using this simple key that I have here to the left. And we're going to use this to solve the problem. So this stuff is things that you probably already know. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. One day is equal to 24 hours. One year is equal to 12 months. And one week is equal to seven days. So what I did was I took the examples from this topic and I'm actually going to go step by step and explain them to you. So I'm going to be working with the multiplication example on page 568 first. And I'm going to be showing you how to do three types of problems. So first is going to be multiplication of time and then addition with time and then subtraction with time. So the first example is on page 568. And if you read the um, problem, you'll be able to get this information that I have here. Okay, so on page 568, the problem says, Crystal is training for a race. She trains every day for eight days. How many hours does Crystal train? Well, if you look down in the little box below the shoes, it says Crystal trains two and three-fourths hours per day. Now, you can use properties of operations to help solve these problems. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to use multiplication in this case to figure out how long Crystal trained. So I have the problem set up here, 8 times 2 and 3 fourths. Now, on, the, on topic 10.4, you may remember me showing you how to multiply a whole number times a mixed number. So remember, there were two methods that you could use. So you could go back and refer to that that video if you like and I and you can do either one of those methods but the method that I chose are here you could do either one I did both methods for you so you could go ahead and just follow along so the first method I separated everything break apart so I had 8 times 2 which I have here 8 times 2 is 16 and then I have 8 times 3 fourths which I have here 8 times 3 fourths which all you do is multiply your whole number times your numerator and put it over your denominator. 8 times 3 is 24 over 4. So I have 16 plus 24 over 4. Now, that's an improper fraction that we could turn or convert back to a whole number or a mixed number. So we simply do the same thing we've been doing and we are going to do the division. So, I'm going to do the division problem of 24 divided by 4. Now, if you've been practicing your multiplication and division facts, then you could know 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6, because I know 6 times 4 is 24. But if you didn't know that, I'll go ahead and follow the steps for division. So, the first step is divide. I can't pull any groups of 4 from 2, so that will be... A zero but I can pull six groups of four from 24 and then my next step as a division would be multiplication so multiply six times four is equal to 24 the next step would be subtract 24 minus 24 is equal to zero my next step will be bring down but as you see there's nothing else to bring down so I am now finished so remember this quotient is our whole number. The remainder is our numerator. And the divisor is our denominator. Okay? So if I were going to write this out like I have been doing, my whole number goes first and I would have 6 and 0 over 4. Now, you do not have to necessarily put the zero fourths because this six and zero fourths 
is the same as the whole number six. So I don't have to have six and zero fourths. I could just have six. And that's where I got this six from. So I did 24 divided by four here, and I got six. So now I'm going to rewrite everything so that you can see clearly my answers. 16 plus 6 is equal to 22. Now you see I put the word hours here. Now the reason I put the word hours was because in our problem, the question said, how many hours does Crystal train? So I put my unit to show that I am answering the question. I not only solved the problem, but I also added my unit so that I know what question I am solving. So the first method, we came up with 22 hours. So now I'm going to go back to my second method, and I'm going to see if my answers are the same, which they should be. If they're not the same, then we have a problem. Okay, second method is to multiply. Actually, my first step, I'm sorry. First step will be to change your mixed number into an improper fraction. So remember, we do 4 times 2, which is 8. Put 8 in your head, which I have here, and then add it to your numerator. 8 plus 3 equals 11. And then you just put that over the same denominator, which we started with, was 4. So now I'm going to go back and put my new improper fraction into my new problem. So I started with 8 times 2 and 3 fourths, converted my mixed number, and now I have 8 times 11 over 4. So then you just do what we've been doing the last few sections, and we're going to take our whole number, multiply it times our numerator, and that has 8 times 11. And if you know what 8 times 11 is equal to, 88. So I put that over the same denominator. So now I have 88 over 4, or 88 divided by 4. You could have left it as 88 over 4, but let's go ahead and change that into a mixed number or a whole number so that we know that we can do that. So there's nothing wrong with practicing um, to do this. Every time you do this, you're getting a little bit better at it. So then I have my number 88 divided by 4. So remember, the steps for dividing is divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. So my first step, divide, I can pull two groups of 4 out of 8, multiply, 2 times 4 is 8, subtract, 8 minus 8 is 0, bring down your 8. So now I have 8 again. How many groups of 4 can I pull out of that 8? Well, I know I pulled two groups of four out of this eight, so makes sense. Two times four is eight. Subtract and get zero. My next step will be again to bring down, but I don't have anything to bring down. So I'm done. So I would write my fraction or my mixed number, I'm sorry, as 22 and zero over Four. But again, I say you do not have to use that zero over four because we know there's no other pieces, no extra pieces. So this, again, will be equal to 22. And I have to put my units to answer my question, 22 hours. So if you look at here, you see that I have done the two methods and both of my answers we're the same. So that means I've done something correct. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Again, pick one method or the other. Don't try to combine the methods together. They're two separate methods, so make sure you treat them as such. Okay? Now, we just covered the multiplication of using solve, solving time problems using multiplication. Now I'm going to do an example, which is on page 569, to show you addition. So the problem on page 569 was 2 hours, 32 minutes, plus 3 hours, 40 minutes. Now, I went ahead and did the problem as it was, and I came up with 2 plus 3 is 5, and 32 plus 40 is 72. And I came up with 5 hours and 72 minutes. 
But when have you ever heard someone say, oh, I'll be there in 72 minutes? Hardly ever, if you've heard it. Usually, they say 15, 20, anything up to an hour. Anything over an hour, we start to move those minutes into making them an hour. So, we're going to go back to thinking, back here on our key, where we had one hour is equal to 60 minutes because we're dealing with hours and minutes. So this is a good way to use your key when they give you these conversions, okay? So I have five hours and 72 minutes. Now I know here, since 72 minutes is more than 60 minutes or an hour, we would take 60 minutes from that 72 minutes and we're gonna move it and make it an hour. So remember, we're doing two steps here. We're taking the 60 minutes to make one hour and moving it from 72 minutes and putting it over here. That's why I have an arrow here to show you. I took 60 minutes away, moved it over to make it an hour. So then if I follow along, I have five hours, 72 minutes plus one hour. So I'm going to put hmm, five plus one is six. But then here I have a minus. 72 minutes minus 60 minutes is equal to 12 minutes. And that's usually, that sounds more realistic to what, oh, I'll be there in 12 minutes, as opposed to saying, I'll be there in 72 minutes. So here, you since your 72 minutes is more than 60 minutes or one hour, we would take 60 minutes from one side and add or move it to the other side. Then we compute to get the correct answer. Make sure when you do this, that you remember to pay attention to the plus and minus signs when you're doing each part for your hours and minutes. That is very critical. You have to remember whatever is here has to be equal. And since I said one hour equals 60 minutes, I added an hour and I subtracted an hour so that we're balanced. There's nothing left over. Okay? So... So far, we've covered multiplication, solving time problems, and addition. So now, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to do solving time problems using subtraction. And this example is also on page 569. Okay, so in this problem, the original problem was 5 hours, 8 minutes, minus 2 hours, 32 minutes. So, for some of you, I noticed before school was out that you were getting confused when you were doing subtraction. So, instead of saying, I'm going to subtract 32 from 8, you would automatically flip your, your problem and say, oh, that's 32 minus 8. But it's not. It's 8 minus 32. And if you only have eight minutes, there's no way you could take 32 away from it because you don't even have that much. So, what do we do next? We regroup or we borrow. So, if you follow along here, I started with five hours. I'm going to take one hour away, which is why I wrote minus one hour, which makes this now four hours. Now, that hour that I took from here, I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to add it to that side. But I'm not adding an hour over here. I'm adding 60 minutes, which is the same thing as an hour. But remember, the conversion, one hour equals 60 minutes. So when you change it back and forth, you make sure whatever the unit is, that's the unit that you're putting there. So remember, I took one hour here away and then I added 60 minutes here which is the same thing it's just like when I have a dollar bill and I say give me change and I have four quarters it's the same thing four quarters is the same thing as one dollar it just looks different okay so now that I've done that I have four hours 60 minutes but hmm I have to do something I moved the 60 minutes over here. This is where a lot of people get confused. We forget to add our eight minutes that was already there. 
So what I did was I took my problem and I cleaned all this up and then I made it clear for you. So I know I have four hours here, correct? I added 60 minutes to the eight minutes that's already there and 60 plus eight becomes 68 minutes. So now my new subtraction problem is four hours, 68 minutes, minus two hours, 32 minutes. And from there, I can just do simple subtraction. Four minus two is two, and 68 minus 32 is 36. So my answer would be two hours, 36 minutes. So just remember, when you're looking at these, we do not say 32 minus eight. We can't take 32 from eight. So we take away one hour and move it to the other side and add that 60 minutes to the eight minutes already there and solve. So make sure when you're doing these problems, you are very, very careful to make sure that you're checking your answers, you're checking your numbers, you're making sure that you are not skipping steps or combining steps, make sure you pay attention to everything here. You can watch this video as many times as you need to, and if you still have issues, you can give me a call, text, or you can message me on YouTube. Please make sure that you are continuing to practice multiplication and division, and working with fractions. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Bye.